The subterranean cuttings beneath the Great Pyramid were excavated before the Great Pyramid was built. These cuttings served as a massive water pump to supply water for the water locks during the construction of the Great Pyramid. Once the Great Pyramid was built, what was its purpose? What was the Great Pyramid structure for? Research indicates that the complex interior of the Great Pyramid was not to be a tomb or serve symbolic purposes or confirm Bible prophecy or to be a weapon or a beacon for aliens, but to be an additional water pump. Using the Great Pyramid structure as an additional water pump made the entire water pumping process much more powerful. Also, the output of the Great Pyramid water pump did not pulsate like the subterranean water pump. The output of the Great Pyramid water pump was a steady flow of water. These two water pumps work together as a powerful water pumping system. These water pumps are connected in series. The output of the lower pump supplied the input to the water pump inside the Great Pyramid. In this video series, we are concerned with the passages and chambers inside the Great Pyramid. In effect, there were two water pumps built on the Giza Plateau. First, the subterranean water pump was excavated into the solid bedrock. This lower water pump was necessary to build the Great Pyramid structure. This simple block diagram shows the two water pumps and how they are connected in series. The output of the subterranean pump goes into the input of the pump in the Great Pyramid. The water enters this ancient water pumping system at the upper end of the descending passage using a siphon. Water exits the water pump out of the upper ends of the King's Chamber vents. How water is delivered to its point of use is described in a subsequent video. Water enters the Great Pyramid water pumping system at the upper end of the descending passage. This opening is about 50 feet above the bedrock in which the Great Pyramid is built upon. Water is moved to this height by using a siphon. Water is siphoned into the Great Pyramid water pump up into the opening at the upper end of the descending passage, which is about 50 feet high. Certainly most viewers know that there is a height limit of about 32 feet for a siphon. How water entered the Great Pyramid water pump is a stumbling block for many who do not fully explore how the geniuses were able to supply water to their engineering masterpiece. Many reject the entire explanation of the Great Pyramid as water pump on this specific issue of the input being higher than the height limit of a siphon. But you must remember that we are dealing with the geniuses who conceived and built the Great Pyramid. They were able to deliver water to the input of their water pump. Here is how the geniuses who built the Great Pyramid water pump supplied water 50 feet above the bedrock to the upper end of the descending passage using a siphon. The upper end of the descending passage is 50 feet above the bedrock. This is where water entered the pyramid water pumping system. 50 feet is higher than the height limit of a siphon, but that was no problem for the builders. The original builders had constructed a wall around the Great Pyramid. This wall has been determined by Egyptologists to be about 26 feet high. This enclosure wall was kept full of water, making the Great Pyramid surrounded by water. This is most likely why Herodotus described the Great Pyramid as being like an island surrounded by water. A watertight conduit existed that connected the pond with the upper end of the descending passage. Water traveled up this watertight passage utilizing the principle of a siphon. The siphon used to supply water to the upper end of the descending passage started about 26 feet above the bedrock.
That means that the siphon itself was only about 24 feet in height, which is well within the height limitation of a siphon. The siphon, in conjunction with the enclosure pond around the Great Pyramid, was how water was delivered 50 feet high for the input of the Great Pyramid water pump. The geniuses were able to deliver water 50 feet above the bedrock using a watertight passage between the upper end of the descending passage and the enclosure pond. Maybe this artificial duct connected to the Great Pyramid was what Herodotus was describing in his writings. That water was then pumped by the lower water pump and the output of the lower pump was connected to the input of the water pump in the Great Pyramid structure. These two pumps are connected in series. Many machines, including water pumps, are connected in series. A V8 engine is essentially eight single-cylinder engines connected in series using some shared components. Farms often pump water from a river into a large tank or pond. Then another pump is used to pump water from the pond up and onto the farmland. That is another example of water pumps being connected in series. The input of water from the water pump inside the Great Pyramid structure is the lower end of the Grand Gallery. The lower pump's output is the upper pump's input. Therefore, water is available for the upper pump at the lower end of the Grand Gallery. This is because the lower pump moves water into the Grand Gallery. The water is then pumped through the Great Pyramid water pump and out of the output of the Great Pyramid water pump. The Great Pyramid water pump does not somehow draw water up from the Nile River. Water was supplied to the Great Pyramid, which filled the enclosure pond. How that was accomplished will be addressed in a subsequent video. We already addressed the path water took through the construction pump. Now we will examine the path water moved through the Great Pyramid structure. Water enters the upper end of the descending passage and travels into the subterranean chamber. Then water travels up through the grotto and into the lower end of the Grand Gallery. Water starts its movement through the Great Pyramid structure starting at the bottom of the Grand Gallery. From there, water is caused to raise up in the Grand Gallery. Then water moves from the Grand Gallery into the horizontal passage towards the Queen's Chamber. Water continues into the Queen's Chamber. From there, water enters a small passage in the floor of the Queen's Chamber. This small passage is similar to the vents in the King's and Queen's Chambers. This small passage connects the floors of the King's and Queen's Chambers. Water moves from the Queen's Chamber floor through this passage and then into the King's Chamber. From the King's Chamber, water moves into the King's Chamber vents, traveling up through the King's Chamber vents, exiting the Great Pyramid water pump. How water is delivered to its point of use from the upper ends of the King's Chamber vents will be described later. How water is caused to move through the Great Pyramid water pump is addressed in subsequent videos of this video series. But right now we will address the small passage between the floors of the King's and Queen's chambers. Although controversial, there is reason to contend that the original builders constructed a small passage between the floors of these two chambers. Both chambers have had their floors damaged in distant antiquity. Someone dug into the floors of these two chambers. Research indicates that there was a small opening in each of the floors of these two chambers which motivated someone to dig into these floors in the area of the openings in search for treasure. Possibly this damage occurred the very day these chambers were first entered by robbers or vandals. Although controversial, a number of researchers contend that these two openings in the floors of the King's and Queen's chambers were connected. In modern times, these damaged floors were considered unsightly to tourists and had been covered up using concrete. I wish that the original direct physical evidence was not damaged in antiquity and then made unavailable by being covered up in recent times. It is this researcher's contention 
that both ends of this small passage have been covered up and is now unavailable for examination. It is too bad that this controversial passage cannot be conclusively confirmed to exist or conclusively confirmed that it does not exist. The direct physical evidence for both ends of this controversial passage have been made unavailable for examination. It is too bad that these floors were cosmeticized by being sealed up using concrete. In contemporary times, these excavations could have been examined using remote-controlled small robots designed specifically for this task. That was done in examining the vents of these chambers, but it is not possible to do the same kind of examination of the excavations in the floors of these chambers. It seems readily apparent the Great Pyramid is not now how it was originally built. It is much different now than it was when it was first assembled. Everyone agrees with that. 99% of the beautiful precision cut casing stones have been removed. If there was a capstone, it too is gone. The wall that once surrounded the Great Pyramid has been removed. The pivoting door near the upper end of the descending passage described by Savro, does not exist anymore. The interior passages and chambers have suffered tremendously from the hands of mankind. Most of the sliding stones in the antechamber are missing. Anything inside the Great Pyramid that could have been removed has been. The only thing left is the copper and the few myths and legends of amazing and wonderful artifacts that once existed inside the Great Pyramid water pump. These myths and legends may have a kernel of truth. The Great Pyramid is a puzzle with many of its pieces missing. In describing how the Great Pyramid water pump functioned, I will try to describe how we contend that the Great Pyramid water pump existed back when it was operational. In this explanation of the operation of the Great Pyramid water pump, a functional explanation will be given for the enigmatic features of the interior of the Great Pyramid. This video was an introduction to the Great Pyramid water pump describing how water entered the Great Pyramid structure as well as the path water moved through the water pump. But what made the water move through the pyramid chambers? How was this water pump powered? How was water moved from the upper ends of the King's Chamber vents to the point of use? How was water made available to the Giza Plateau? And how was the enclosure around the Great Pyramid kept full. What was the water pumped to? What was the water used for? All of these questions and more will be addressed in the following videos of this series.